I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will derive a formula for mean or expected value of continuous uniform distribution. So let's take an example here. We will take a very general example. Let's say that the distribution is as shown in this particular diagram. So in general whenever we define a continuous uniform distribution then we are considering a rectangle which is kind of like this where between the points A and B the random variable has a constant PDF right so that is what it is defined and this value basically is such that the area of the rectangle is 1 so in general this value will be 1 over B minus A is that okay so that is how the function is defined. So the definition of the function is that f of x is equal to 1 over b minus a for x to be between a and b. Is that okay? n is equal to 0 otherwise. right so it is zero otherwise means kind of like this so that is how continuous uniform distribution is always defined right now we need to find the formula for mean or expected value some of you may be aware of integration we are going to use integration to derive the formula a mean as such you can visualize here is kind of center value is that okay so the mean is center value so what do we expect so we expect mean to be right in the center is it okay so so basically from symmetry we can say from symmetry we can say mean or expected value right mean will be written as mu will be equal to half of this means center value means a plus b divided by 2 so that is the formula right now some of you could understand our derivation who have done integration in calculus so but that's the formula which we are going to derive right so what we are saying here is that the mean or the expected value is equal to the sum of all this right so we'll do integration of this over the entire region so so we can integrate that is sum minus infinity to plus infinity of x times f of x d of x that is what it is the function as such is defined as 1 over b minus a 1 over b minus a right so that is how we have defined f of x right that is how the function is always defined so b and a both are constant b minus a is a constant since it is a constant we could write this as 1 over b minus a integral now if you see this integral then in all other values it is 0 right so so this integral is basically from a to b since the value is 0 for f of x that is the definition of f of x right so it has a value 1 over b minus a only between a to b interval right so i should have written here itself a to b but let me write it down now strictly i should have written it there so it is x d of x right so the integration formula for x is x to the power of n divided by n right that is the formula which we are going to use so 1 over b minus a and this is x 1 plus 1 which is 2 over 2 so that is the integral of x from a to b is that okay so that is how we get the integration part of this now that is equals to 1 over b minus a and here b so let's write down b so you get b square over 2 minus then you substitute a 
a square over 2. So these are standard ways of solving integrals in calculus, right? It's probably a very simple example for those who are doing calculus, right? Now, so b square minus a square, you know, is b plus a times b minus a. So we'll just simplify this as b minus a uh, times, let me write down this as 2 is the common denominator, right? And b square minus a square could be written as b plus a times b minus a, correct? So at this stage, we can always cancel this to get our result, which is b plus a divided by 2. Do you see that? So that is the mean for us. So we have derived this formula, which is mu or expected value equals to b plus a divided by 2. So that is the formula and this is a very simple derivation, especially for those who have taken up calculus. Correct? We only used a very simple technique here and that is that if you have an integral of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, let us say f of x equals to x to the power of n, in that case integral of f of x dx, that is x to the power of n times d of x, uh, from limits a to b will be x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, correct? And these are the limits, so what we do is we just put a bracket here from a to b. And to calculate this, we'll first distribute, uh, write b for n, okay, uh, and then, I mean, x, and then a for x. So like we did here. So that's the formula we used. And at this stage, we have used difference of square formula, which is, uh, you know, b square minus a square could be written as b plus a times b minus a, right? So that is our factoring technique. So we have used two formulas here, one, the factoring, the other one, the integral formula for a power function. Is that okay? So with that simple calculation, we get our derivation but i hope it is very understandable that the mean should be midway between a and b since the uniform distribution right so always constant so we get average of these two which is a plus b divided by two it makes sense right so i wrote b plus a but same thing a plus b divided by two or b plus a divided by two i'm anil kumar in the next video we'll actually find the formula for variance which will be slightly more complicated but important to understand okay so so we'll derive that formula let me give you the formula here itself first so so the variance for x is is equals to b minus a over 12 so that is the variance formula uh, so those of you who do not really want to get into details of deriving can take that formula anyway i'm anil kumar you can always share and subscribe my videos thanks for watching